Salutations, this is the Miracle Mall Podcast. My name is Mario Piaios. Thanks for joining us once again. Today we have a special guest. Her name is Tirza of Bordeaux of Danzig. Hello. Hi, Tirza. All right, um, so we usually talk about local creatives and uh, entrepreneurships, but today we have a special type of guest. We have someone who's an orthodontist. Um, could you please give your information on how you go about being at a established location? Sure. So um, my husband and I own a business called Urban Orthodontics. We okay. do orthodontic treatment, mm -hmm. right? Braces and Invisalign, we are specialist office. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing about where we are though, location wise, is the office has been around for over 35 years. Okay, okay. Um, so it's like a staple in Union City. A lot of people know of this office. Um, the owner was Dr. Gary Weitz and he did orthodontic treatment. Same. Okay. Uh, for about 30 years and then we took over four years ago. So um, once he retired, mm -hmm. we took over. So it has been around for a long time. We did change the name to Urban Orthodontics. Um, we have a new brand and are doing things obviously a little different, but it's really great because a lot of the parents, for example, that got treatment with Dr. White okay, are right. now bringing their kids and mm. or their cousins. Um, and they really, really appreciate the treatment that we, we so, do. So it's like a, su a, su a succession of clientele. Yes. Oh. And, you know, it, it maybe didn't work out, couldn't have not worked out that way. But, um, you know, we, we try to do the best that we can each and every day okay. um, and treat people the best possible. So they really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like the same type of service and model that was given before. So okay. it's a nice continuation. Awesome. Yeah. And, all right. So for those who don't know, because there tends to be a common misconception, mm -hmm. um, what is the difference between dentistry and what an orthodontist does? Yeah. So a dentist can do a lot of different things, right? Like umbrella, Usually. It's like an umbrella term. Yes. Okay. They're like the house of everything. You're going to go there first. You're going to get your cleaning, your checkup every six months, that's what we recommend. Mm -hmm. um, and then they do fillings, crowns, um, some root canals, but okay. there are things that they will refer to a specialist for. There's a few specialties within dentistry. Okay. We are one of them. And um, so braces, Invisalign is by straightening teeth, fixing bites. We do all of that um, at our office, but we are specialists. So the dentist would be referring to us for that type of treatment. I see. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and what is the location that you are established on? Where's the address? Mm -hmm. you know, so it's a, a few blocks from here. So it's super cool. I walked here today, so it was fun. Okay. Uh, 4015 in Palisade and right. 41st Street. Okay. Um, on the corner there were a gray building. It used to not be gray, but we painted it kind of like, that's kind of our, our colors, gray yeah. and blue. So okay. it looks pretty cool. Yeah. It, it's pretty, it's actually funny. Um, I... I've been in communication with you to try and get this podcast going, yeah. <laughs> and I think like a week ago or something, I was I was biking in the region, and huh? I saw where you're located, and I was like, oh, that's where it is. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, I saw it on my way, I think back from an event I was working actually on my mm -hmm. bike, I was like, oh, there they are. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. a lot of people say that, so it's like, oh, I've seen you so many times, I just, you know. But um, but yeah, it's, it's a great location. Mm -hmm. um, we love the area. I love the community. So... Um, we're just happy to be here and providing the best treatment possible. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, behind every proper entrepreneurship or any creative effort, there is a personhood or a person, and it is my preference to try and see that that is recognized. Sure. So, mm -hmm. uh, Tirza, what, who are you, and how did you get to the position of where you are in urban orthodontics? Sure. So, I mean, I'm from. I'm not from here, the United States. <laughs> I'm from another country. I'm from Chile, okay. South America. Um, my, I was living in Santiago with my family and my dad came here when he was in his twenties, worked for a while, but left, had a family obviously. And the company he worked for when he was here just called and said, Hey, we want you to come back. Mm -hmm. So my dad thought this would be a great opportunity to give, be able to, you know, give us a different life, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe a better life. Obviously, that was his goal. Yeah, so, his incentive. Yeah. yeah, so we moved, and uh, I was about 10. Uh, not easy, but because I love my family, had to leave everybody behind, but um, mm -hmm. with my just immediate family, and we started our life here, and I watched my dad work really, really hard, 
And he became an entrepreneur later in life, and he's okay. still actually working. He's 79 years old. Wow. That, at that point, it's, it's more for the focus on discipline. 100%. Work. That's yeah. what he says every day. Yeah. I am not retiring because I want my mind <laughs> to stay. That's fantastic. Stay, yeah. I have, um, we, we, we have someone who we work with uh, at Save Latin America. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure you're well aware of them. Yeah. Um, President Johnny Torres, he's just like 96, 97. And I heard. He, he, I is, heard. he is sharp as a diamond. Yeah, it's a... It's a you know, I, I feel like um, that's really what it is. You got to just keep busy, right? Uh -huh. Keep your mind busy. Um, that's amazing. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Johnny Torres, uh, I, know, um, I don't want to talk too, too in-depth about this. It's more about you. But uh, okay. Johnny Torres is someone that I, I remember the first time that I met that man, I was so overwhelmed about how like precise he was about communication and just in general, like, contact and, like, com like knowledge. Um because I, I, I know a lot of people. I'm a, so, I'm, I'm a social person. I'm an event coordinator. So I met people of different kinds of walks of life, mm -hmm. people that are in a more ignorant side of things, people that are, like, you know, very, uh, let's say, well-versed in, like, communication and, like, mathematics, all kinds of people. Um, and the fact that he is able to be in touch with the world and his community sharper than most 20-something-year-olds is a confound environment to me. Um, but anyways, let's get back to the subject on, on yeah. hand. Um, so how did you get to becoming a professional in the orthodontics business? Did you go to school for it? Did yeah. You, yeah. How did that go? So, I mean, I, I did the whole, uh, high school and university and I actually, I have a business degree. I, I took my first business class as a freshman and, and I, I liked it. Adelphi University okay, in cool. Long Island. So okay. I did four years there, which I loved. It, it was great. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got my degree in business. Um, so not dentistry at all, oh, but okay. I had the idea in my mind just i couldn't commit to it it's, yeah. it is a lot of work um, of course, yeah, it's a whole imagine. different beast <laughs> <laughs> so um and but i kept hearing my dad in my mind over time saying that's such a great career you should think about it and mm -hmm. uh i did i i started working actually i worked for ubs Payne weber so i worked um on the 18th floor there they're like uh you i don't know if you know ubs financial it's a financial company mm, they're pretty not, big i'm not, not well versed in that okay continue. there's a uh, ubs in uh, weehawk and they have a huge okay um a huge branch there and then their big branch uh is in manhattan so i was there for two years okay but i didn't like it well what so, did you like about it if you don't mind me asking I'm a people person. And it was I, a very desk job. Very desk job. I yeah, just, I can't do that. Yeah, lots of numbers. I'm more of a science geek, I guess mm. you could say. Um, so it actually pushed me to do what I really wanted to do, which was um, get my science degree and go to dental school ultimately. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, I had to work hard. I lived off nothing. I was telling you $50 probably oh, a week yeah, to yeah. eat. It tends to be a phase in the life where yep. the, the, the person the hustling, is, the life, hustling right? has to happen. You have to be patient and work through that. Yeah. Exactly. Su super important. So, yeah, I, I just, you know, kept uh, thinking about my goal and, and reached it. So then once I, I got my science degree, um, I went to Hunter College for that. Okay, nice. Uh, great school. Mm. Great school. That's uh, in New York City, correct? Yeah, in yeah. New York City on 68th, I think it is. Cool. Um, and so I did that. I got my degree, applied to dental school. I got in, thank God. That's not easy to do. And um, I mm. did four years of dental school. So mm -hmm. that's how I got my dental degree. That's where you got your feet into the world that you're in now. Okay. Yeah. And in the process, I met my now husband, who was also, uh, he was two years ahead of me, mm. although I'm older. Oh. but um <laughs> but <laughs> no i know just, uh but um he uh graduated and then he actually applied to orthodontics mm -hmm. so you have to when you want to be a specialist you have to do more school mm -hmm. so you apply to a residency program which is usually three to four years depending okay. on the specialty right we talked about oral surgery which is one endodontics which is root canal specialist mm -hmm. orthodontics is the fixing bite braces mm -hmm. invisalign um, so he, he got into school and he went and then I finished dental school, graduated, and then we got married and, and, uh, kind of here we are. That's oh, right. yeah. fantastic. So it's really cool. Yeah. We work together really well, which isn't easy. I think a lot of it's people say that. It's not easy working with a significant <laughs> other. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's not, but. It is even harder to work with an ex. <laughs> so I'm glad it's working out for I hope you. I don't have to do that one. Does it? <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be that would be a little difficult. But um, anyway, um, uh, so as this goes uh, very universally, a uh, topic I still always find it addressable. Um, mm -hmm. As a business, how did the pandemic affect your uh, your orthodontic uh, endeavors? Yeah, it was difficult. Yeah, we see our uh, see our, yeah we see our patients every six weeks. We mm -hmm. have to right. Yeah. Um. We we when we when we start treatment on a patient, we're not talking about one tooth we talk about a whole mouth mm -hmm. and we're actively seeing them for two years usually that's yeah. the common uh, time frame because you have to like align things and like process like the yes long everything takes takes time mm -hmm. so we couldn't see them for three months wow it was hard we closed for that long a time and we also needed time to rework the business uh get ourselves ready to open back up mm -hmm. you know covid policies um, go over even more uh, sterilization, although that's what we do all the time regardless, but, you know, train our staff on that. So there were so many moving parts to even get ready to open back up again and just make sure that our staff was comfortable because we work mm -hmm. in the mouth. Yeah. So it was it was uh, a definitely a challenging time. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it felt like everyone, everyone involved with anything that had to do with being out and about was affected. And the most... Like direct affectations came from you know like barber shops like anyone who had to do like like nail like hands like anything that has to do with like getting close to a person and partaking yeah. in their appearance or mental or like health like body wise yeah it was a very direct affectation there it was I never thought I would have to close my business for three months that that is uh, detrimental yeah that, that that took a lot out of everyone um, what is it um, if you could describe to me uh, that kept you afloat during such tumultuous times because they were, those were very tumultuous times uh i'm a hard worker so i think I'm, i don't give up right yeah. and uh my husband's the same way so we took the time we took a two three weeks to kind of let it sink in <laughs> and then we just kind of regrouped and said well what are we going to do in this time so we took the time to rebrand ourselves. Yeah. So we have a new logo now, which I love, and I want to talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's so much fun. Uh, new website. We took the time to kind of, like I said, like the planning behind things. Okay. Yeah. So even though we weren't seeing patients, um, we were still going into the office, just my husband and I, every single day. Working well, on like the micro details behind yes. the workplace. And yeah. what are we going to do when we open? sending emails to our patients saying hey we are not going to be open till this time mm -hmm. rescheduling all of our patients because we schedule mm -hmm. in advance so and my husband and i did all that alone so um we that must have been a lot of grunt work a lot of work on top of just like the rebranding that we were doing and just trying to figure out our way but we stayed positive uh because there's no other choice and what we also did is we made sure that we saw our patients virtually mm -hmm. um, through the whole process. That's cool. So we were able to see them. We saw their family because we we really bond with uh, the family. Of, most so. most me most medical or any kind of service that happens for you know uh, well being mm -hmm. wellness tends to have some degree of closeness. Like for example, I remember my pediatrician when I was a child. But, yeah, um, I do too. Yeah, actually. but at the same time, like it's interesting to see that, or to hear rather that you had a virtual relationship yeah. with the clientele. We did. Um, it was great. I have a question because um, I, I know friends who had like braces and Invisalign, and all that. You have to be like vigilant, like diligent and consistent with it, otherwise mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Um, how did that affect your 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 patients? Because like you know, as you said, the things were closed for a good amount of time. Yeah, so it was a complete, uh, not only financially and everything affect, but it affected our patients' treatment. Must have so, been an ambiguous process because some people kind of stick with we it. We were behind. Yeah, we I were behind. Imagine. So we we were three months behind on every patient, mm. except for Invisalign, which I'll explain in a minute. But our braces patients, we couldn't see, so we were virtually seeing them. Actually, we were checking their bites. We were checking to see how things were. If there was any issues, we would virtually help them through it. Okay. If there was a wire poking them, like, okay, this is what you do. So, uh, hey, you should keep wearing your rubber bands or please stop wearing it. So we did do some minor things that we were able to do. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, but we were halted completely. Mm -hmm. So when we actually opened, we had to work double. Mm. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was the case for a lot of things. Me personally, I was not only just, you know, shut down for the time that everything was closed, 
I, I had to go through an absolute pause and reset because I am the person who fills the storefront right. as an event coordinator. So, um, uh, to me, it felt like such Very a challenging. to me it felt like a direct a direct challenge from the universe, or if you believe in God or whatever you just believe in. I'm, I'm a religious person, but whatever it is you believe in that is out there, if you do think that something's out there, I remember when it did happen. I remember thinking like, is this for me? Like, because like, it was such a direct thing. Like, I what I would say to clients uh, that work with us is. If you have an event in mind and you want to have it at a location, I can fill that location up. And that became a very controversial and uh, let's call it unmarketable skill eventually. Yeah. And then eventually it was more of a process of um, either figuring out how to do things digitally for mm -hmm. companies or um, getting bigger locations mm -hmm. for things. Yeah. Um, so for a long time, personally, just to give you the insight, because you gave me the insight into the sure. goal behind that. Um, it, I, I basically had to take a pause in the legitimacy behind what I did, which was uh, definitely a intense confrontation. Um, but besides that, it made me existential as to how to best exercise what I do. Because the idea is that when you go into something like a craft, a discipline, whether you're a painter, a pot maker, you know, pottery, yeah, whatever it is you focus on. Actually. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. We actually have a, a local business called Artesana Pottery. I don't know if you know of them. No, no, not at all. That sounds cool. Do she, they do? Do they? You they, do, they they do classes. And oh, seminars. I used to do that in high school. I loved it. If you do, I, we, I might we, give we them a call. We can or share something. information. Yeah, For sure, she's, I love that. She's a uh, she's a a independent. Woman, female creator. She's incredible at her craft. I haven't met her personally. She's worked with the team before. Um, I follow her on Instagram. She's very well talented at what she does. She holds classes and everything. I'll, I'll share her. That's so cool because we actually, my husband and I were really big on uh, just having a really good uh, staff in terms of just like we, we, we like to do games together. We mm. like to go do events together. We, we get them lunch here and there. We, we do a lot of fun things together. Uh, it's important for us to have, a, have good, a good positive environment. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually looking, always looking for things to kind of gift them. I will definitely. This would be kind of cool because it's relaxing. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll definitely share the credentials at the end of the podcast. I'm actually um, having one of my patients owns a, a manicure pedicure place in, in Hoboken. Oh yeah. So they're all going to go next uh, in June That's and cute. they're all getting a mani pedi and we're going to bring some champagne for them so they can get pampered for the day. That's cute. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, getting back to the, the conversation. Yeah. Thing, um, it, so as we were saying, like, you know, uh, when you do a job or a discipline, it tends to be that you try to exert the best version of yourself in order to, you know, do things as best as you can. Um, and my line of work was so jeopardized because the best that I could do was fill up a store, a location. So I had to reinterpret what it is that made the best sense. So for a while I had that difficulty, and I know everyone else did as well. Mine, 100%. mine was so so direct because <laughs> that was a talent skill. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love I love this current time that we're living through. Um, I like being the age demographic I am to the time because I'm able to see the fruits of the labor of the creatives of my generation, and I'm also able to see how the current businesses that survived are going to push forward after that. Because I'm sure you're well aware, a lot of storefronts went closed. Oh, yeah. A lot of places in this area went closed. And I've had this conversation in a, in a podcast I had Will on and the, the uh, restaurant owner of Tatoraya Napoli. It was a very, very overwhelming time to just walk through New York City or West New York and just see, like, that place closed, this barbershop is gone, like, that store is empty. Mm -hmm. um, so very, I, very difficult. Yeah, it, it, it's such a shame because it's all about, like, the opportunities that are present to you. Like, if you started a business here and now, you have a way better chance of surviving um, than if you started a business, let's say, maybe three months before the pandemic started. And you didn't even have, like, a regular basis client. And I have some friends that did. They started, right, in the same business, not maybe here, but they just started, like, two months before COVID. Who knew, uh, right? Uh, so rough. Yeah, uh, we we at Reach had a, a very, very fortunate situation where um, we got the storefront within the pandemic without planning it, like with the first month of a lockdown. And at first, you know, most people would consider that an absolute loss because you can't use the storefront, you, know, you can't make more capital gains. But if you recall, the first month or two, a lot of people weren't able to pay their rental space. Yeah. And so the, uh, the local municipality permitted that they would go without paying. So that helped us in that end of things, at least to survive. So, sure, yeah, of and course. So opportunistically, it helped yeah. us be able to survive. And it's a blessing because, again, this is a, a startup 
more or less a startup marketing company and we were all young here so it's not like we had like years of clientele basis to survive off the regulars we had no regulars it was just kind of like okay we don't have to pay rent this month <laughs> so let's figure it out and then when things open up we can figure it out again um so yeah it, it to me it was such an incredible lesson because um i feel like no one else in this in this existence in our society would have be able to figure it out like if you're in the 1980s business was as usual, you know? I feel like no other era in the United States, besides maybe the Great Depression, felt such an instant shutdown. Like, it, it was really up to how well you were able to maintain based off what you had. There are some families that couldn't even feed themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And with that also came a lot of good efforts. I don't know if you're aware of them, but there's a place called, uh, well, not a place, a local refrigerator called uh, Food yeah. for Us, New Jersey. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, I went to high school with them. They're oh, like great that's people. Cool. Valerie and Amanda are incredible people. They, they do the job very well. Um, so for me, it was incredibly, incredibly inspiring to yeah. see people of my generation start to do things for the community that needed to happen before the pandemic. 100%. The thing about the pandemic There's is... There's good things that came out yeah, of it. Not, not, you know, not all the other Not the majority, stuff, yeah, but, <laughs> but there are, there are things there are that come out. some small things, yeah. I mean, flowers grow, some flowers grow in the dark as, as yeah. much as they might grow, grow, grow in the light, you know? So the way I saw it was... Um, the pandemic allowed for people to not just go with the if it ain't broken, don't fix it mindset, which we all tend to go by in a capitalist system, um, and allowed us to see what we need to work on with ourselves internally and in our disciplines, and then what we can do thereafter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad to hear your input on how that went for the orthodontics. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely hard, but like I said, I think with any business, you have to... Um, figure out how to move forward. How to move forward, yeah. yeah. And in this uh, instance, like you mentioned too, you have to kind of think outside the box and be yeah. creative mm -hmm. because we had to. And yeah, you never think that an orthodontist would have to do that because yeah. it's, not, it's not that type of business. It's not the job requirement. It's not uh, yeah. part of the craft. So it's not. But um, mm. I mean, I guess the, you know, when times are rough and you get through it, it makes you stronger. That's I just keep that in my mind and uh, just keep moving forward you know yeah i mean a lot of people were affected in very tragic ways i i consider myself very blessed that i was able to understand that there was very severe things going on in the community but that i had the privilege of having a home yeah i had, I had my home right uh being with my my closest friends about the whole thing because some people are alone or in very toxic yeah. domestic violence situations you know yeah that and there's yeah, so many of that stuff yeah right now. and and somehow i was able to not only stay afloat but like properly flourish in my own way, shapes, or forms. That's really good. Um, take, take something good out of something, yeah, right? Something awful, yeah. Um, so essentially, it's very crucial for, to really recognize those things. Um, I wanted to ask you something, and yeah. this will probably be my final question on this. Um, my question is, so now that things are reopening, now that things you know, seem to be getting better, Governor Murphy, I believe the 28th of May, is saying that the six-foot mandate will no longer be necessary. Um, how has your transition into the reopening resurgence gone for you? Because as you know, in orthodontics business, I can only imagine that you, you have to have a lot of physical contact with the mouth. Oh, which, yeah. Um, which is a hygienic place to work in. Yes. Uh, we, we started off in the beginning when we opened in June, very much almost like a hazmat suit on. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, haven't, I haven't really approached any of those things because yeah. of the fact that I don't know how it would go. You sweat. I mean, it wasn't really hazmat, Ooh. but we had the like whole the... PPE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we would sweat. Dr. Chali and my husband, um, <laughs> he, he he's, he's Indian and... Uh, He's a big guy, so he was sweating. <laughs> um, so we had to crank up the AC. But um, so there was a lot of PPE, extra precautions, um, and, uh, you know, paperwork, you know, questions when you call and make an appointment before coming in, parents dropping them off, taking the temperature. So it's Ooh. a whole lot of that. Uh, we're still doing a lot of it, and we will forever sterilize and yeah. wear masks. Hygiene was learned. We're, well, we're, I mean, we have to do, we were doing those things before. But now there's a, a, a very harder, I guess, uh, let's say concrete looking yes. into it because you know, we just came out of a very right. excessive pandemic. So now we're slowly transitioning um, to lightening that up. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, right now still taking temperature and if there's anyone traveling, we get, we at least 10 days. Um, we have a, you know, some forms. Uh, we still have that, but we're not 
uh, our chairs are socially distanced, okay. but um, we're seeing more patients now than yeah. we were at the same time than in, 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 in the summer. Yeah. So we kept it very light, uh, mm -hmm. very few people in the waiting room. They, a lot of the parents had to wait in the car outside. So now we're starting to go back to our normal yeah. speed of, of patients coming in. Love but we're still that. wearing masks, obviously, in the yeah. front desk too. And we're still taking temperatures, but mm -hmm. we're definitely lighting that and uh, going back to seeing like our normal uh, pace of Fantastic. patients. Fantastic. I'm glad to yeah. hear that for you. Yeah. All right, um, we're going to get to the final leg of this, just a uh, sure. more time. Uh, yeah. In this, in this uh, conversation, we basically give the guest uh, a moment to, you know, reiterate who you are, the sure. location, the store from the business, any kind of promotional services you want to entail, anything that you might have in plans in the future, or near, near future. Um, and then I'll switch it over to my side on reach, and we'll do the same for that. Yeah, one. sure. So Thank you. Like to have the time, go ahead. So, like I mentioned, we see, um, we do braces and Invisalign in our office, okay. um, and we start seeing patients at the age of seven. So, I think that right now is something I want to talk about, just because a lot of people don't, are not aware that coming to an orthodontic office at the age of seven is super important. That Not that you're going to need treatment, but there are some early severe cases that mm. we have to treat um, for habits, for, for example. So we like to see our patients, and if we're not treating them, we act. We see them every year for kind of follow up and to um, just check their growth and monitor their growth. So okay. something to bring up because a lot of parents don't know that, and also too, you don't need a referral from your general dentist to mm. come to see us. Mm. Um, although some people do, but you don't have to. A lot of our patients get a referral from their their friends or their family, Google. But, you know, obviously there's tons of general dentists that refer to us that are really great and we, we refer back. Um, so there's that. And our consultations are free. Mm, the consultations um, are free. That's yeah. important. And we take, we take two x-rays, super important, and we take some photos. And Dr. Chayan and I do a very comprehensive exam and we'll, we'll talk about everything. Um, if we see a, a big cavity, we'll tell you that too. So it's not just orthodontics mm -hmm. uh, we're very thorough we do really love what we do and we provide the best service i think in in hudson county for wow. sure okay awesome um, and promotion wise in may and we still have a few days in may uh -huh. we did um an invisalign promotion for mother's day so oh. in the whole month of may we gave 500 dollars off stuff our raffle coming in the summer is going to be to get the ear pods um, I think we're probably going to have like some, some other stuff going on for kids. So we do, we have, we know how to have fun. I'll well, tell you that. That's fantastic. I'm um, to hear that. And next time I come, we'll bring our t we give t-shirts and bags out and Aww. brushing kits. Um, I am going to do something fun too for kids in the summer. Um, I, I don't have too many details, but we're going to raffle off some, uh, toothbrushes, the electronic ones, um, water picks and stuff like that too in the summer. So, um, I, I will probably let you guys know more about that um awesome. but yeah we always have promotions and some fun stuff going on throughout awesome. the year thank you too yeah no problem all right and now i'm going to give my final little promo time um so i'm going to use this time to basically thank all the local businesses that we have been working with in the last few uh i guess in the month or so um first and foremost uh thank you very much cafe maria for working with us uh basically letting us play open mics and having our galleries there. Um, I'd like to thank also Trattoria Napoli for letting us have shows there every Sunday, um, small and very calm R&B shows. Uh, I'd like to thank SLA Save Latin America for anything that they've done to help us and the locations that they've allowed us to have. And uh, yeah, oh, oh, uh, Wanna Feel Good, Yvette, she's in Mercado de las Americas, fantastic woman, CBD products, A1. And uh, honestly, thank you very much, Will, of Union City Living. Because, I will. Yeah, because he's done a lot for us as well. Um, if I have forgotten you, I'm sorry, but I appreciate everyone. We love Will, too. On this, side, <laughs> on this side. Alrighty, thank you very much. Have a good one. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers.